trustee of the Gordon B. Hansen Trust. Uh, this is the way this is, I'm only reading it as the way that this is currently done as you all have done the pleadings. So that's why I'm reading it as this is phrased. Versus Stokes, pages one and two, seven two zero zero three two. Can I have appearances of counsel, please? David Ochoa for Sun City Hill. Thanks so much. Uh, Joe Coppers, appearing for Ms. Tobin as trustee of the Board of the Hanson Trust, Your Honor. Okay, thank you so very much. Okay, so let's walk through a couple of different things. Mr. Kobich, I see you're here, which kind of answers part of the question, because as you know, you did a motion for withdrawal. The court has signed that order. That order has not yet been filed. Nor is notice of it, well, obviously the order has been filed, nor is notice of entry, which is probably why you're here today. So you're presumably here to argue this. So you're still counsel for Ms. Tobin as trustee, which is the only role that Ms. Tobin has in this case. She is only granted intervention in this case and the consolidated case number, as this court has reiterated on multiple times, including last week, but also multiple times, and is written and memorialized in orders of this court, and you have been advised of that. As such, however, counsel, I have to remind you and caution you, she was your client, and you let her file numerous pleadings in a capacity which this court then had to strike, and I'm going to have to strike more things today because she continued to file pleadings that she asserted that she was in this case as an individual. And you know, because you were here, when the court reminded you that she was your client as a trustee and only as a trustee and had no authority to file things as an individual, and as her attorney, you needed to ensure that she was not filing things as an individual. Since that time, she filed numerous things. This court had to do a long hearing last week again had to strike numerous pleadings again, and is again going to have to file, strike additional pleadings today, because there was additional pleadings filed for purposes of today by, quote, stated as Ms. Tobin as an individual, even though Ms. Tobin, A, as not an individual in this case, was never intervened in this case as an individual, your firm continued to file things and list her in the caption, including, for today's purposes, as an individual, when she is not an individual in this case, even your order on withdrawal, this court had to scribble out part of it because you still listed her as an individual, so you have continued, please, counsel, to multiply these proceedings by incorrectly listing your own client incorrectly. Please ensure that nothing else that you file in this case lists her incorrectly. So this court is, A, going to do the following before we go to the motions. A, there was a pleading filed on 8-27-19 by, quote, Nona Tobin, an individual and proper person. That document was titled, Opposition to Sun City Anthem's Motions and to Strike Liz Pendens and for a Vexatious Litigant Order and two motions for attorney's fees and counter motion for an order to show cause why sanctions should not be imposed. The clerk's office somehow put that on for today. That document from 827, 2019 at 425 a.m. is stricken as a rogue document for two reasons. One, Nona Tobin as an individual is not in this case. Should never file this. She's not an individual in this case and be the only role she had in this case was as a trustee of the Gordon B. Hanson Trust, and in that capacity, she is represented by counsel. Only counsel, Mr. Kopich, the Appalachian firm, would have been able to file documents. For those two independent reasons, the document of 827 gets stricken. A second document was filed by Nona Tobin, an individual. And this document was even included in the courtesy copy binder provided to the court. The first one was not. That document was titled Nona Tobin Declaration in Opposition to Sun City Anthem's Motion for Attorney's Fees Against the Gordon B. Hanson Trust. That document was filed at 8-2019 at 1.52 a.m. That document also needs to be stricken because for the same reasons. Nona Tobin 
improper person, an individual, does not exist in this case because Nona Tobin, an individual, was never granted intervention in this case, only Nona Tobin as a trustee. Nona Tobin as a trustee of the Gordon B. Hansen Trust is represented by Mr. Kopich and the Michael Mushkin firm, and so even Nona Tobin as a trustee could only file documents through Mr. Kopich and the Michael Mushkin firm, not in proper person for those two independent reasons. The document filed on 8 20, 2019 at 1.52 a.m. that I just mentioned, the declaration, also is another rogue document which also gets stricken. Now, in the caption, Mr. Kopich, that you filed on 8 19, your opposition to Sun City Anthems, you put in your caption, you put under counterclaimant, you included Nona Tobin, an individual, and his trustee. That is incorrect. That caption is incorrect. Nona Tobin, reiterating myself for the gosh knows whatever umpteenth time, is not an individual. Your only client, and your only client you ever had, was Nona Tobin, a trustee. Correct, Mr. Kovic? That is correct, Your Honor. So please, in your own pleading, make sure you have your client correct only as the trustee. Similarly, counsel for Lips and Nielsen, cross-defendant Sun City Anthem, despite this court telling you numerous times, and despite you all objecting and even asking for fees in your very own motion for Ms. Tobin filing documents, the ironic part of that is you <coughs> don't even have the caption correct. You put Ms. Tobin as an individual, despite the very fact that you were asking fees against her for filing things as an individual, but yet you put her in the caption as an individual. When you are contesting and arguing vociferously that she should be sanctioned for filing things as an individual, but yet you put in the caption, Nona Tobin, an individual, in your counterclaimant portion of the caption. So you incorrectly put her there as well. Once again, multiplying proceedings, causing confusion. So you put that both in your document, 8-8, asking for fees against the Gordon B. Hansen Trust incorrectly, and you also did it again on 8-22 <coughs> in your reply. You can appreciate the consternation and concern of the court, despite the multiple times I have told everybody to please make these captions correct. I have, gosh oh golly, ordered you, pled with you, asked you nicely, reminded you over and over, have denied fees. Even last week, while another attorney from your firm was here, reminded everyone that the captions need to be corrected, and you still didn't do it from last week to today on your very own motion for fees. So you can appreciate this court's inclination is going to be what? Denied. That's the court's inclination. Because if the very parties can't even get their own captions correct and are claiming that proceedings are being multiplied by Ms. Tobin for filing things because she can't file things as an individual, and you all don't even bother to get it correct in your own captions asking for said fees and have multiplied the proceedings and continued that confusion because of your own filings, this court's inclination is to deny your request on all the independent bases in addition to the timeliness issues and the other issues raised in the opposition. So there's the court's inclination. Go ahead, counsel. <coughs> My understanding, Your Honors, from last week, our request for a vexatious litigant order was continued today. It was continued today. You filed it for today, so you wanted it set. You wanted it set for the hearing on the date that you filed it that was originally heard to be heard. So we never continued it. My understanding, Your Honor, is that the what was set for today was our, our motion for peace against the trust only, and our our motion for a vexatious litigant was actually scheduled for last week. Counsel, you weren't here last week. The only thing that's set for today is what was set for today, which was originally set for today. <coughs> the only thing that's set for today is counter defendant, Sun City Anthem Community Association, motion for attorney's fees and costs against the Gordon B. Hansen Trust. Um, there was one document impermissibly filed by Ms. Tobin as an individual, which just got struck as a rogue pleading. 
that somehow the clerk's office put on for today, we struck that as a rote pleading. Everything else was dealt with last week. And you heard the court's so information that's on your not motion. my understanding, Your Honor. I well, believe it's actually counsel, listed you on, your, on your docket still. No. Feel free to look. I believe there's two things set for 10 a.m. Counsel, feel free to look. So, I guess what I'm hearing from you is that the request for vexatious litigant was denied last week. Everything that was set for last week was taken care of last week and is addressed in the minutes for last week. And your firm was supposed to be drafting the order, so hopefully you're taking care of that in accordance with EDCR 7.2. Uh, Caleb Anderson he was here last week and he is drafting the order. I spoke right. with him and his, his statement to me was that the vexatious litigant request was not addressed last week. Counsel, I don't know how many times you'd like to say it. The motion that's on for today is the motion that you all Council, the motion that's on for today is the motion for attorney's fees and costs is what we show that is on for today. Ms. Tobin filed a opposition document okay to the extent that Ms. Tobin filed something as an individual right let's take a look in this case if she filed something as a document this court had to strike that if you're saying that there's another document filed with a clerk's notice of hearing the court will double check because you all have multiplied these proceedings so many different ways by your impermissible, incorrect captions and filing a whole bunch of pleadings, that let's take a look. Okay, so if I can clarify again, Your Honor, my let's, understanding. Let's, let's go to the counsel. Let's go to the motion. Court gave you an inclination on counter defendant Sun City Anthem Association's <coughs> motion for attorney's fees and costs against the Gordon B. Hansen Trust. That we know is on for today. Okay. So let's deal with that one first, right? Okay, you know that's on we'll, for we'll, today. We'll go there first, but I would like to clarify Council, the other finish? one. Council, can I finish? Sure. Please, so we have a clear record. The court gave you its inclination is to deny it, and I gave you the reasons why, right? I gave you the reasons because you've multiplied the proceedings and caused such confusion in the proceedings by even your own incorrectness in the caption as well as the untimeliness of it right and because of the delay and everything and your aspect with regards to 760 incorrect i'll tell you with the ccnrs ccnrs would not be before this court in fact if you're going for the ccnrs the ccnrs would be for an agency it would come before this court so for all those reasons the court's inclined to deny it feel free to set forth the oral argument go ahead um i, I apologize your honor i see that we did not correct the caption uh, and it, it lists Nona Tobin as an individual. Um, my my main argument was going to be based on, on the CCNRs, Your Honor. Um, but like you just said, you believe that should be before a separate body uh, as a separate action, I guess, based on the CCNRs. However, we also included other bases under the statute, NRS 116. Um, uh, under under that provision of the statute, if a party brings a action um, challenging compliance with the statute or compliance with the governing documents, it gives the, the court um, the ability to award fees. Um, we also requested fees as sanctions under uh, 18, NRS 18 um, and EDCR 7.60. Um, we believe that um, that the claim should have never been filed against Sun City Anthem, their, their basis for bringing the action were particularly misrepresentations by Nona Tobin as to timing of a payment when she then um, said that uh, created inaccurate notices. Um, we found out through the litigation that she herself admits that the, uh, the 
payment was, in fact, untimely. Um, that came out both in documents that were filed with the court and at the trial that was held. And she was questioned about that at the trial. Um, she made the representation that the, the payment was, in fact, untimely. And that was their basis for bringing the action against Sun City Anthem in the first place. So the claim against Sun City Anthem really should have never been brought. Um, we're requesting just under 35000 in fees for um, bringing the case and obtaining a decision on, on summary judgment. And we would like you to award fees against the Gordon B. Hansen Trust, who is the correct party in this case, who was the homeowner. And that's who we're requesting you to award fees against. How is it timely? Um, they're saying it's untimely under 21. Uh, or, or sorry, under <laughs> the, they're saying it needed to be filed in 21 days. Mm -hmm. But under the statute, it, it says, it just says NRS 116, and on the CCNRs, which you are not addressing, it doesn't um, adopt the 21-day provision. It, it, it says, it has separate language that is based on a prevailing party. The case is on an appeal. We can actually make this request after the appeal is decided, because that's when the determination is finally going to be made that we are, in fact, the prevailing party because they're appealing this decision. I think you can award fees now. That gives them the opportunity to basically um, allow them to appeal it with the current appeal. But because there, it's the termination in the statute and the language is prevailing party, we can make the request for fees after the appeal is decided. How is that consistent with Campos Garcia? Uh, I can't answer that question, Your Honor. How is that consistent with any Nevada rules of appellate procedure? I'll phrase it that way. I would just say, Your Honor, our motion also includes the CCNRs. The CCNR doesn't adopt a 21-day time period to, to make this request. I don't CCNR specifically require that you go through NREN? I don't believe, Your Honor, that it requires us to go through NREN mediation again to request fees. We have gone through NREN mediation. That's been completed. I don't believe to request fees at this point that we're required to go back to Oh, okay. Request them. Give me a case. Give me any case law. Give me any citation to anything that allows you to go straight by asserting that you can go straight from alleging a violation of CCNR straight to district court. So, Your Honor, she alleged a violation of the governing documents. That's what this case is. And she went to in-room mediation prior to that. And so it says if you bring an action, and you're not, and the, the prevailing party of that action, it's mandatory, it says shall, in the CCNRs, shall be awarded fees. And we went you, to interim mediation. Did you allege that anywhere in your, anywhere in the pleadings? Is any of the remedies, any of the damages, anywhere? We, we reference the, the, Provision of the CCNRs, I don't know if we've alleged that we've already gone to interim mediation, if that's what your honor is. Is any of your damages, when you asked for the ruling on summary judgment, did you anywhere ask the court for that remedy? If not, isn't it waived? Are, are you talking, in, in our answer? Anywhere. If you're asking it for a remedy, right, pursuant to the CCNRs, wouldn't it come up as a remedy? Or you have to go through the standard prevailing party with the time limitations they're on, right? In our answer, I'm, I'm sure we requested attorney's fees for having to address this. Whether or not we base it specifically, mention the CCNRs in, in the answer, I'm not sure, Your Honor. I'm just trying to ask, is there any support for what you're asking for? It's really where I'm trying to go with this. I haven't seen that you provided me anything that supports you to now ask for this. Under the CCNRs, under 116, Tell me how you're asking under 18. I understand your sanction argument, but the sanction argument is under what? So your 760 argument is under what?
the, the 760 was specifically on having to come to a hearing where they were not prepared or requesting that as a sanction. They, they came to the hearing on the motion to um, substitute real party and interest. They were not prepared at that hearing. They withdrew that. The, the, the same one where you keep on putting her as an individual in all the captions? That's correct, today, Your Honor. So we, we, we made that mistake where we did not remove her from the caption. Even until today? Okay. I'm hearing counsel, your response? Your Honor, I'm going to compound things at all. I'm very, very quick. Uh, the new Rule 54D2B provides that despite the existence of a pending appeal, the motion must be brought within 21 days. It's just not timely, Your Honor. They did file a number of cost disbursements uh, in five days. That's not timely. And with regard to the, the issue on the, the sanction, I was not present. I understand from Mr. Mushkin that he, under, he listened to your initial inclinations and withdrew the motion. It was not he was not prepared that day. He listened to you, and, and I think he withdrew his pending motion to substitute at that time, Your Honor. And I'll stop at that point in time. I've read every single aspect of this. There is not a single aspect in which this court can grant it. There is no case law, no statute, no rule, no law that allows me to grant it on any of the basis that you've provided. And there's no basis even for a sanction because even up until today, you have the incorrect parties in your own caption where you're asking this court to sanction for having incorrect parties and multiplying the proceedings, and you've done the same thing up until your own pleadings today include your reply. Even after putting on notice, even last week, and you still didn't fix it for today. So, no sanctions under EDCR 7.60. There's no basis under 116, because if you viewed that you were a prevailing party, you still would be required under the NRCP and the NRS to have done timely motions you didn't. You don't have it under the CCNRs. You didn't put it anywhere. You haven't provided this court any legal basis to grant you any of your relief on any of the various bases, so it needs to be denied on each and every basis. Denied. Please prepare the order consistent therewith. It is so ordered. Your, now let's go to the I, second basis, counsel. Can I That's one more thing? No, you may not. You've had opportunity to argue, had the motion, the court needs its ruling. So we can't, after the court's already made its ruling, then say we're going to add something, right? That wouldn't be fair because then it goes back and forth, right? That's not fair. So the court made its ruling. It is so ordered, right? already did that. So now we go to what you thought, which isn't on for today. So let's clarify that point. You all filed, explain what you did, on 8-8 at 548, you filed an untimely, Sun City Anthem Community Association filed an untimely joinder to counter defendant's response to Nona Tobin's motion for a new trial pursuant to 54B and 591ABCF, and motion to dismiss pursuant to NRS, I'm reading the caption as is, 38.310 or N2, and counter motion to strike from the record rogue motions and Sun City Anthem Community Association counter motion to strike notice of Liz pendants with attached complaint for a vexatious litigant order and for attorney's fees pursuant to NRS 18.010 and EDCR 7.60. Now, last week at the hearing, the court, that second portion, that joinder aspect, the court already addressed the striking the notice of loose pendants and granted the striking of the notice of loose pendants portion of it. The court already addressed the vexatious litigant order and denied that for the reasons stated, okay, last week, incorporating what I said last week. The simple version of it was a couple of different things. One, she's an individual, not part of this case, didn't even have jurisdiction over her. And because reiterating everything I said today about you all multiplying the proceedings and keeping her on all these proceedings, it was everyone's issue. You all did it. You, the bank, everyone. Kept her on. You all multiply the proceedings. I told you all to fix the caption. You didn't multiple times, okay? So that didn't happen. And the attorney's fees pursuant to NRS 18010 and EDCR 7.60 to the extent that, that was on, and Mr. Hong's motion that you all joined, also addressed last week. Denied it without prejudice. Same reasoning, went through all of that. The timeliness issue, the fact that you all multiplied the proceedings. That all got taken care of 
last week. The other portion of it, that the rogue pleadings took care of, struck her rogue pleadings because she was never in the case as an individual. To the extent the other portions of it, the court couldn't address, the court had to strike the other portions of it because you all responded to rogue pleadings she shouldn't have responded to in the first place because they were rogue pleadings. So the court already took care of all of that last week. So all of that got taken care of last week. You all were supposed to be drafting the motion. That's based on your 8-8-2019. The only thing that was left for today was the motion that I just dealt with. Now, because the clerk's office incorrectly left Ms. Tobin as an individual, which I dealt with at the very beginning of this hearing, her opposition incorrectly left that on for today and her own, quote, counter motion. That's the reason why the court struck that before we started with your motion for attorney's fees. That was only one motion was left for today. That's why the court had to do it the way the court did it. So the court is taking care of, hopefully, unless somebody files another road pleading in this case, which you please do not. The court now is taking care of every single pleading that's been filed in this case. The court, just to let you know, there was some minutes that got initially filed after last week's hearing, but then they got locked and they're getting redone because there was a little typo in those minutes and they got redone. Are they they're done. Oh, they're done and redone. So the clerk's minutes got redone because there was a typo or two that had to get fixed. So if anyone printed the minutes last, the fourth, whatever, whatever, they got redone, but it now says that they're redone. So that got taken care of. So hopefully everything is cleaned up, cleared up, other than your firm owes us an order from last week, and Mr. Kopich will owe us an order from today, and then he owes us the withdrawal order and his NEO. But please make sure that nothing says Ms. Tobin is an individual on any caption on those two orders, please. Thank you so very much. In order to correct, I mean, it was our effort to just clarify we were not Ms. Tobin's counsel as an individual. We are going to stay in as her attorney, as attorney for her as trustee. Uh, for the, the so Bless you. I have no idea what you're saying because if you somehow filed a motion to withdraw as an individual when she never existed as an individual, that of course would be a completely impermissible filing. Since that hearing happened before Senior Judge Barker on July 9th, gosh oh gollies, I'm out of jurisdiction for one day. Um, this court understood that you were withdrawing as her as trustee because look at your own motion in how you listed it. It said trustee in one section, so this court, at least the senior judge understood it was its trustee. The very order you submitted to this court, if you look at it, in the upper left-hand corner, it says trustee. So this court had to take it, and then in the main section, it said individual. So this court had to take it when you submitted the order, but you meant what you said in the upper left-hand corner as trustee, because that's the only role she's ever held in this case, and that when you put it in the middle when it said individual, that that was the error. That's the reason why the court scribbled out, interlineated whatever language you would like to use. The words is individual, and then hand wrote in trustee in the other two sections before this court signed it. Because that's the only way you could have ever submitted a motion or an order under Rule 11, because the only role she ever held in this case was as a trustee, <coughs> as the court has stated multiple times in open court, has put in minutes and has incorporated in multiple orders, including its June 20, 4th, 2019, findings of fact, conclusions of law, and judgment after the bench trial. So are you now telling the court that you submitted a motion to withdraw as an individual when she never was an individual? Your Honor, it was our effort to just, we are, we are the attorneys for her as trustee of the Gordon B. Hanson Trust. It was our effort to just clarify that we were not her, her attorney as an individual, and we are not her attorney as an individual, Your Honor. That's, it was our effort to do that because of all the, I have, the court is completely unclear what you're saying. Did you file a motion to withdraw on something that never existed? I, I, Your Honor, it was, it was just to make sure that the court understood that we were not, we were not representing her as an individual in any capacity, Your Honor. That, that was, well, was, but you can't withdraw on something that doesn't exist, counsel. I understand, Your Honor. Whatever you need to fix, you need to get fixed then, because Look at your pleadings. You put trustee in several sections. <coughs> okay. Including the order that you submitted that this judge, myself, signed. Upper left-hand corner, 
under representation, right under your own still name. Okay, I'll read what the are. I will. And if you submitted something and had a senior judge and did a hearing on it, I was not here on July 5th. And I'm sure no one filed a motion on something that never existed in the first place. I made representations in open court to a senior judge when this judge wasn't here. And if something needs to get fixed, I'm sure it'll get fixed immediately. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'd just like to clarify. Counsel, what? And the, to there there was a miscommunication between me and counsel who appeared last week about the vexatious litigant order. He was not aware that should be in the previous order. I'm going to make sure that he knows that that's done and put in that order. Your Honor. That sounds wonderful. I look forward to seeing correct, accurate orders with only the parties in each and every case. I wish everyone a very nice rest of your day, and I look forward to going to my 1030. Sorry for the parties who are waiting. That's it, counsel. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I need to move forward with my 1030s more patiently. I'm not sure. I saw a filing by Nona Tobin on Friday, Your Honor. If there's any other filings by somebody who is represented by counsel, I am sure their counsel is going to make sure. Otherwise, this court will need to be calling in people to ensure that they are taking care of their clients. This court has been more than patient on that issue. Have a wonderful rest of your day. The court makes no advisory opinions, only things that are before it. Thank you so very much, everyone. We do appreciate it. And once again, sorry for everyone who is patiently waiting. We'll go to our 10. We have another 10 o'clock. Sorry. We are wonderfully trying to assist everyone in the best possible manner. Sorry, you're our other 10 o'clock. You weren't here at 10 o'clock. Is this a patient finance holding, Your Honor? Yeah, we called you way back at 10 o'clock. Thank you for me. I'm sorry. I had three approvals of the same witness today. I had my assistant call. Okay. We didn't know about that. We settled this matter. You settled? We settled the matter last night. Joining your meeting. Press star 7 to mute or unmute. We don't. Then we don't need your court call. We don't. That's what I'm saying. Don't take them off court call, please. Let's take them off court call. Let's call this. Let me have them put on the record that we settled. We'll get you to.